Good morning, Zero here, and uh, today we'll be talking about the DMCA and how it could land you in jail if this continues. So, grab yourself some coffee, sit back, relax, and let's get into it, shall we? Ah, Senator Thomas Tills from North Carolina. How I despise you and your DMCA stuff. <laughs> now, anyway, seriously, um, this is a senator here in the U.S., and they have proposed a bill. A uh, bill to uh, pretty much make DMCAs a felony. But don't worry, because the government has assured us they probably won't follow through with said felonies. <laughs> Uh, yeah, if you haven't subscribed yet, you should go ahead and do so now, like the video and share it out to the world, um, because we need to know about this stuff. But anyway, there is a U.S. law being proposed that could make um, streaming anything that would be considered copyright uh, felony, and that includes game streams. Uh, if somebody decides they want to DMCA you and then send it on to, say, um, the Department of whatever and the FBI, you could face jail time, which is a big issue here. Um, I understand that things like the DMCA and the copyright, Section 230 and stuff, really does need to be fixed. <clears throat> it is not modernized, right? It was written in a time when, uh, you know, the Internet was just coming about and, and things like this were... Um, I guess uh, things back then were more like uh, it was dial-up, papers, uh, magazines, uh, things like that. Actually watching a video through the online was not even a thing, I don't think, at the time. Uh, you know, Netflix was getting started and all this other stuff for some of these things. Well, okay, I'm sorry, that was 2000s, I think. But anyway, um, you know, and there wasn't a whole lot uh, when it came down to it, you know. In the early days of the internet, of course, there was a lot of rampant copyright out there where people would take TV shows and stuff and just blatantly put it up. And, of course, that happens still today, um, you know, even if it does get monitored and take down from time to time and this, that, and the other. Um, however, this particular thing is not exactly the best thing in the world to have um, any time or, you know, it, not, not to really have this particular bill. But anyway, <clears throat> according to this new bill, it would make it a felony if you were struck with a DMCA. Um, and that is a very, very dangerous thing to put, especially when we don't have adequate protections in place for things like DMCA. Um, as in, you know, any random you, Yahoo out there can essentially claim your stuff and claim it's a DMCA, whether it is or isn't. It could be you just sitting here talking about something, for instance, like this, and we're not really using anything that would be DMCA-able, <clears throat> and somebody could come through and slap a DMCA and try and claim it's theirs or something for one reason or another. Uh, you know, we've seen that happen multiple times in the past where you've got somebody who's a little bit upset at a developer or something like that, like, for instance, the Alex Maurer thing, where they would then copyright claim anyone who was playing that particular game because he felt like he held the rights to some kind of music in it or whatnot, but in reality, he didn't hold the rights, but he was angry at the publisher and the developer and was trying to get people to, you know, echo his his cause to get YouTubers and things, streamers to, uh, you know, rally behind him, but nobody would. And then he went on this DMCA strike of over 40-some different things where he would just take it all down, even if he talked about it for the most part. Uh, and, you know, <clears throat> he would just take it down or she would take it down. I don't remember. They're trans. I don't know where they went to. Um, so, uh, yeah. And I don't really care <laughs> on that. But anyway, point is, they went on a DMCA spree. And we also saw the thing with, uh, what's her name? Lucy Lou, Lucy Who, Lucy something another. When it came into the anime industry where um, she was fragrantly, you know, straight up just violating, you know, copyright laws by watching unedited versions of anime and, you know, occasionally reacting to it every once in a while with a, 
oh no, and things like that. Um, you know, and then people were talking about that and how she's going to screw things up for the rest of us if she didn't stop that and actually made, you know, I guess, you know, a, a cut down version, an actual reaction to it type deal instead of just uploading a complete episode and watching it on the YouTubes and things. And then she went on a DMCA spree as well. If you talked about it, if you said anything, and then of course, you know, YouTube and stuff made all these new harassing guidelines and stuff. So if you made a joke about her or anything else like that, that was uh, grounds to pull down your video and things as well. And they went on a DMCA strike as well. Uh, you know, we've seen it multiple times in the past where, you know, you can upload something. I mean, heck, it happened to me too, right? Um, I was talking about, I think it was Persona and translations versus games and, you know, the TV, uh, the, the, the anime and all this other stuff and how things get lost in translation or mistranslate it and all this other stuff. And, uh, you know, we played about 30 seconds of an anime, which, uh, of the anime, which happened to be on a news site, kind of like this, right? And it was at the tip top of the screen, you know, partly, you know, almost all there, but not all there. And just a few 30 seconds or 30 seconds or, or, or 40 seconds worth of that. And it got claimed and DMCA struck down for that. When, you know, the whole point to this is to prevent somebody from, say, uploading that entire episode, not just 30 seconds and talking about it or critiquing something and things like that of that nature, but it was still struck hard with the DMCA and it got stuck on my account for like six months because it wouldn't go away, <laughs> you know, but the, these things do need to be fixed and changed in a way to where it protects not only the creator but also the copywritten material so if somebody does come along and does something like that it can go look at it and go okay come on this is a 30 some minute episode and there's 20 seconds of it in this video that's not a dmca that's not copyright you know you can't do that and then reverse that sort of thing um you know there needs to be more protections in for the creators as well as you know the copyrighted material because you do have companies that come in and do stuff like that nintendo was very bad at it uh, at one point in time where they would come in and, and just strike anything if you didn't apply for their partner program and stuff like that as well uh, which of course is now defunct as as well so you know <laughs> and then you've got things like the, the likes of square enix where they would dmca you and uh you know the persona games where they would dmca you if you went past a certain point and did a let's play or streamed it and all this other stuff um and things where they would just come in and straight up dmca you and that's where the gray areas lie when it comes to dmca say i buy a game which I don't have anything handy to hold up, of course. Everything's back there. Um, say, I, I own a game, right? I went out and I bought the game. I should be allowed to, you know, do what I want with that game, right? If that means I want to use cheat codes, I use cheat codes. If I want to mod it, I mod it. Uh, you know, if I want to stream it, I stream it. But the second I start, say, reproducing this game and selling it out there or something like, I take the game and I rip a bunch of copies and then go around town and start selling it, then yeah, that's, that's a violation of law, right? Uh, copyright and uh, copyright infringement and stuff like that. I can't do things like that. Uh, you know, but, uh, you know, if I, I get, to, if I own said game, I should be allowed to stream said game, which is why the laws need to be fixed, right? You know, that's a huge gray area because most developers don't really care, right? Uh, because it gets eyeballs on the game. People then go buy the games. And for the most part, a lot of games, you know, playthroughs are different uh, depending on the game. The only time when it isn't and you could make a legitimate case, in my opinion, to actually not have that game stream is when it is a story narrative game. And, you know, the game's main focus, I guess, would be is its story narrative. You know, it, there is no change to it. There's no branching paths or anything. It's the same thing regardless of who's playing it. And then you could go ahead and make make a uh, 
maybe make a um, you know argument of not being able to stream that particular game. But when you got games with multiple choices and all this other stuff, say maybe you're just playing multiplayer on Call of Duty or you're playing around on WoW, even though it does have a story element to it and a story-driven element, you know, you can do all sorts of things from BGs to mythics to to raids and all this other stuff. And every playthrough is going to be different. You know, even if you have the exact same team in a BG, you know, you may win, uh, you know, this particular match because you were able to capture three flags, but then the next match, the other team dominates you capturing two and you can't really get, get the flag back or whatnot, and they win as the time runs out and things like that. So, you know, it, it's, it's a lot of, it, it's a big gray area. And, you know, I've rambled on. Anyway, the felony penalties for this copyright infringement can include up to five years of imprisonment and a $250,000 fine in the most extreme cases. Um, according to this article, of course, they are rarely applied, but, you know, whatever. Anyway, um, but yeah, uh, let's see. There was a thing that I did want to see. Uh, but yeah, in 2020, this is a great reason to treat streaming an entire movie, for instance, to 100,000 people differently from making a downloaded available to such same people. When it comes to... Oh, well, sorry, start, stop there. In 2020, there is a great, there isn't a great reason to treat streaming, um, you know, for that while making it available for download. And that is true, right? Uh, you know, if you put it on the Pirate Bay or something and 100,000 people download it, that's still pirating, right? That's illegal. You're distributing copyrighted works illegally. Um, and if you go and fire up Twitch or something or YouTube and you stream, um, the Avengers or something like that, you know, to a hundred thousand people, it's no different. And, you know, that, that's not really an issue. Uh, I mean, it's an issue, but it's not like something that we don't, you know, come together and agree. Yeah, that's a bad thing. People shouldn't do that. People do do that. And when it's found, it's taken out, which is totally fine. When it comes to game streaming and streamers, though, there are areas of concern, um, mainly because it is a gray area, of course. Game streams often do not uh, contractually have the license rights necessary to broadcast the game they are streaming, for instance, which is where the gray comes into. You buy the product, right? But then you don't have the rights to actually stream said product, but a lot of places let you stream it anyway, and that's where things need to be updated at. Uh, you know, if you own the game, if you own the product, you should have the right to stream it, I think, in my in my opinion, of course. Um, but yeah. The <laughs> Gosh, there, there's so much. But um, <clears throat> there are some people or some publishers who aren't happy with this uh, or who aren't happy with the fact that, you know, you are streaming their product. And to be totally honest... You know, if they want to come at you, I think that's fine. If they want to take down your stuff, you just don't play it. No eyeballs get on it. You know, if the cells don't go up as a result, then so be it. You know, that's the thing that they've come into. But to sit there and threaten somebody and have the ability, you know, or have the ability to threaten somebody and go, you know, you could be looking at jail time because you streamed the ending of Final Fantasy VII Remakes, uh, you know, ending or whatnot. That's a bit too much, in my opinion. Uh, you know, it does serve to chill speech when it comes down to it, because here in the U.S., we do have our Constitution. We have our amendments and all this other stuff, uh, you know, Bill of Rights and things. And, you know, when it comes down to it, we have the First Amendment where we do have the ability to voice our uh, opinions and things like that. You know, but when, when you sit there and loom, say, if I was to do a review of something right um you know and i used video from said game or whatnot you know it could square enix or somebody could swoop in and say nope dmc aid you can't show that um you know even though it's purely a review and all this other stuff and then the next thing you know i've got the fbi knocking on my door or a paper delivered to me saying i'm under investigation or whatnot um <clears throat> due to streaming you know, 10 seconds of Final Fantasy VII Remake's uh, portion near the end of the game or something like that um, during a review. And that that's a bit ridiculous, in my opinion. And the fines are definitely ridiculous as well. 
the whole system does need overhaul. Definitely needs some overhauling. But uh, yeah, let me know what you think down in the comments below because uh, this this is kind of a little bit getting scary, especially if you're on the gaming side of things or reviewing and other stuff because you know there's a lot of things written in the copyright and, and the DMCA's, uh, the Digital Millennium, Millennium Cop Copyright Act and things that helps protect you and stuff. But you know, <clears throat> to sit there and have this and go, well, you know, you're well within the rights of DMCA, uh, you know, it, because of you know what you've done or whatnot. Just the fact that if somebody does come through and DMCA strike you, or, or, or copyright takedown or whatever, uh, you know, you could still face that time, or you will still have to then go into the courts and argue your thing. To, to prove that it's not costing time, money, and things that you ain't got just because you had the audacity to review a game badly and the developer didn't like that, so they decided to DMCA you and say, oh yeah, we're taking this on. You know, that sort of thing. Um, so yeah, it definitely has the ability to chill speech when it comes down to it, uh, when it comes to that. Anyway, let me know what you think down in the comments below, and I will talk to you later. See ya! Hey, thanks for watching. Don't forget to leave a comment, smash that like button, and always subscribe for more. And of course, there are other videos floating around somewhere on the screen, so click one of those and see if you can find something that uh, suits your fancy. Till then, I'll see you later. Bye.